Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I am Valerie, your neighborhood pyrography artist, here to help guide you on your burning adventures. And today we are looking at the North American River Otter. This is part of the Animal Artist Collective, and this is from May 2018. For this otter, I am burning on a 5x7 Baltic birch, and this little man has been nicknamed Charlie, so I will refer to him as Charlie throughout the rest of the video. I started off using the Sarol uh, transfer paper, graphite transfer paper and did not like it. It just wasn't dark enough for what I wanted and it really rubs off so I switched back over to my walnut hollow graphite paper and you'll see how the lines change where parts of it is darker and that's just where I've switched the graphite paper. So now on to the burning. I started off with the small ball tip for the Optima. In fact, I used the Optima for all of this burning except for one spot. You will see when I start doing the rocks that I switched over to the coal wood. That tip is extremely bumpy. It's not uh, polished at all, but for this particular project, I think it worked great for the rocks and you'll see that here in a few minutes. But while this is going on, I did want to talk about the Animal Artist Collective. If you missed the manatee uh, paper burning that I did, that too was part of the Animal Artist Collective. And just to catch you up, the Animal Artist Collective was founded to provide a platform for emerging artists, promote positive messages for animal welfare and conservation, and connect artists to their communities. The original artwork produced for the Animal Artist Collective is always made available for sale, and at least 50% of the proceeds are donated to a nonprofit animal conservation organization. I have chosen de Defenders.org, and for this piece, $175 will be donated under the River Otters, though they are not in danger of being extinct. The Animal Artist Collective has added two new guest artists. We have Kat from Meow Meow, Meow, Meow Kapow, Tongue Twister, and Amy from Amy Howard Art. All the links will be down in the description so you can find their channels. This goes along with Denise, Jennifer, Anita, Eve, and Sadie along with me. So we are now up to eight and it's so awesome to see all the different art that's being produced for all these different animals. Please make sure to share the love, sub the love, and go check out all the other different videos in our playlist. I all of the artists will be linked down below in the description, and I will also make sure to have an iCard pop up so you can easily go find each one and show them how much you support and love the art that they are creating for the animals of the world. Now I'm going to take a few minutes to just talk some fun facts about otters. For Charlie here, I personally took this photo at Arizona. They have several, in fact three, uh, North American River otters in their little captivity. Um, otters in general can live up to eight to nine years in the wild and 25 years in captivity. They, have found, they are found in all states and territories of the U.S. and Canada. They can have one to six pups at one time. Their conservation status is least concern. And besides their eyesight underwater, river otters use their whiskers to help hunt for food. The otter's whiskers can sense vibrations of fish movement, so they are able to detect the proximity of their prey. Otters are also known to have very high and speedy metabolisms. Within an hour of eating, the substance of their meal makes it through their digestive tracts. A really cool fact is that otters have 57,800 hairs per square centimeter that make up their thick warm coats and that's what helps keep them warm in the winter. Thankfully for this piece, I did not do 57,800 strokes for each hair. Luckily when doing burning or any type of art, you don't have to do that. That's just way too much detail and you don't see it anyway which is good because I don't think my hand could have taken it. As for diet, river otters primarily eat fish. They are also known to eat whatever is easiest to find, like crustaceans, mollusks, another tongue twister, insects, birds, oysters, shellfish, crabs, crayfish, frogs, rodents, turtles, and aquatic invertebrates. 
Their population is unknown because the river otter is one of the hardest mammals to census, but it is estimated to be over 100,000 based on harvest reports. Their range can be, they can be found anywhere in streams, lakes, reservoirs, wetlands, and other marine coasts in all states and territories. River otters are being reintroduced to the Rocky Mountain region to counter the uh, population decrease in the 1800s. The decrease was due to hunting for their fur pelts. The biggest danger to the river otter is now global climate change and humans impacting the environment and their habitat. Now, the last uh, set of videos we did for the AAC back in March, Anita had this awesome idea and she inspired me to do this as well for looking at the myths and legends of the animals. And I did that with the otter and come to find out they are throughout a lot of ancient uh, civilizations legends like the otter kings um, out of Scotland the Scottish tradition um, is the otter is well loved and is a member of the Caledonian forest fauna um, the basic story is that um, the otter kings who are accompanied by seven black otters when captured, these beasts would grant any wish in exchange for their freedom, but their skins were also prized for their ability to render a warrior invincible and were thought to provide protection against drowning. Luckily, the otter kings were hard to kill, their only vulnerable point being a small point below the chin. Otters sometimes swim single file as a family group, and it has been suggested that this might account for some of the Loch Ness monster sightings. In a similar vein, an old Anglo-Saxon name for the otter was water snake. In Celtic folk folklore, the otter is often characterized as a friendly and helpful creature and is given the name water dog. And in ancient Prussia, the otter, again known as the water dog, was esteemed above all other animals and a severe penalty was imposed on anyone who killed one. We also have legends here in the U.S. The Native Americans, um, otters feature, they feature as a lighthearted trickster character in the folklore of some tribes, particularly in children's stories. His exploits are mischievous, but not usually malicious or aggressive. Otters are considered lucky animals in many North American cultures, and the otter is a symbol of loyalty and honesty in some West Coast tribes. But in northern British Columbia and the Alaskan coast, river otters, usually called land otters, are associated with ghosts and drowning and were regarded by the people with awe and dread. It was taboo to eat land otters in many Pacific Northwest tribes in, in colonial times. The trapping of land otters to sell their furs to non-natives became a source of tension in some communities. I really did find it fascinating to see that the otter was so well revered across the world and through different time periods of civilization. For my animal choices in the future, I am planning on looking at more of the legends and myths and sharing those with you as well, because I think it connects us with the animal more and in connecting with the animal more, we connect more to the earth. And then there's this deeper desire to ensure that we help clean up and save what we can from the destruction we have created. Now we are going to turn around and go back to the burning. I'm using the large ball tip by Optima and I'm just trying to lay in and kind of smooth out the hairs a little bit. I will go back and detail those a little bit more, but really I'm just trying to lay down my first layers, get rid of the pencil, which is why, or I'm sorry, the graphite, which is why you keep seeing the Vanish 4 in 1 eraser pop up. And I'm using the 12 round, rounded skew to lay in thinner hairs and kind of get the texture in without burning too deep. And I've also been using the um, number 18M spear shader, the side of it to lay in thicker hairs and then the edge of it or the tip of it actually to shade those in together 
and get more of a layered effect. And I do continue through the whole piece, pop around to the background. Um, I've looked at it and it's not dark enough. And I, you know, work on it some more and then step away. And when I come back and start working on the otter again, I'm looking around and darn it, <laughs> those rocks still aren't as dark as I want it. I was really happy with how the bottom right rocks turned out and how the top left water turned out. I thought it worked really well and I continue to darken it and so you really won't see it till the end. Right here I'm using the 17 coarse hair and I'm just trying to get in the thicker hairs, the darker hairs, the ones that fall more in shadow because like I said with the 57,800 uh, hairs per centimeter you're not putting all of those in. And so I've got the first layer down. Now it's time to start darkening it up. And originally I felt like I had put too much detail into the background. I wanted that to be less in your face, less noticeable. So I do spend the rest of the time when I'm working on the background, not only darkening it, but I'm trying to smooth it out and make it not make it a little blurry so that the details aren't so sharp and that way Charlie here can pop out. You'll also see me bringing in a diamond tip file. Wait, oh, there it is, and a knife. And I'm trying to scratch out some of the hairs, some areas I accidentally was not paying attention to my reference photo and went a little darker than I wanted to. You'll see more of the knife at the end when I'm really trying to pull out the white hairs. I don't normally like doing that, but for this um, particular piece, it, it worked okay. And the diamond uh, file that I'm using, the diamond tip file that I'm using, I was actually using it and to scratch in lines for the fur so that when I use the spear shader, it kind of embosses. Is it emboss or? the other one. Anyway, it pushes the wood down so that the burner doesn't hit that area to burn it. I also used a metal palette knife because it was thinner to do the same thing. I don't know that it worked as well, but I gave it a try. I have to admit the speed of the video is really throwing me off. I don't normally go this fast, but I wanted to make sure that I had as much of the otter in the video or the way I burned it in the video so that you could see in fact I was able to get 99% of the whole burning uh, session into this video and still be under my 25 minutes so I was really proud of myself but unfortunately I kind of feel like we're running a marathon and going fast the whole time <laughs> just watching it is making me tired so I do apologize for that um, if you want to see a certain area of the video a little slower, I can do a you know quick under 10 minute video of certain areas, whether it's me scratching out the fur more or darkening up the background or just working on the fur in general. Just let me know down in the comments and I can get that put together for you. Now earlier you saw a Optima spoon shader. So the very first one, that was the uh, test spoon shader that Pat has sent me to see what I thought of it, how well it heated up and what have you. Later on in the video, if I haven't done it already, things are going so fast. Um, the spoon shader that you see later on in the video is the actual spoon shader that is now available for pre-order and I will have that information down in the description as well as all of the supplies I used in this video. So now I'm, I guess I'm going to quickly go back to the pause. The pause actually caused me quite a bit of trouble. I didn't want to make them black, though they are very dark in the photo, but I was not getting the sharpness that I wanted without losing and making it look like a black just stomp and so I had to go back and forth and really 
tighten up that detail without going too dark or you wouldn't even be able to see them and I am happy with how that turned out and so now the main part I'm on a higher heat because I just saw a little bit of smoke go up I'm on a higher heat trying to get in the darker shadows of the fur so that it really looks layered and scratching out the lighter highlighted parts for the photo the Sun is it's not it's more on his right but still coming from his front versus being directly from the right so that's why there's not a cast shadow in the back but I really need to get those highlights in there to make things stand out more and oh now we're already signing my name so <laughs> we finished that part and this is how the finished burning work looks I will be wiping it off with denatured alcohol so that I am going to add here in a second a little bit of white and cream colored pencil that way I could pop out some really bright highlights but when I was done it was not all that noticeable so this is the denatured alcohol that I'm using it helps to remove graphite and when you burn there is of course carbon residue left on the wood so I wipe it off that way when I go to finish it I didn't used to do this but when I would go to to brush on my polyurethane on past pieces I would notice that I had a bit of a brown tint that was all over my board even in my light areas and it figured out is because I was wiping off the carbon from darker areas onto the lighter area so now I clean up with the denatured alcohol and that helps make sure that that re residue isn't spread around so here I'm just using uh, this one is a cream Karen Dash Pablo pencil and then I also am using a um, Prismacolor very thin in white and those are the only two pencils I used and I'm just trying to really get a bit of definition in the lighter fur again in the final piece you don't really see it unless you hold it at an angle but I do think adding the colored pencil was a nice accent that's more subtle but allows the whole otter Charlie to pop out so I'm gonna mention here because everything's so sped up I don't want to have to talk even faster to get it in I did use a poly, spray poly uh, acrylic or polyurethane to seal the colored pencil in in fact the photos that you'll see of the finished piece I have not done the brush on polyacrylic yet but I did need to seal in that colored pencil because as soon as I go to brush it on without it being sealed the white colored pencil would just go everywhere clouding up my burning I'm not going to have to use a UV protectant spray because nothing that I have used for Charlie here is any kind of light fast issue and we're done I am happy with how Charlie turned out if you're interested in purchasing this piece all of my information is down in the description don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let me know in comments what you thought and hit the like button. Happy burning. Bye.